Looking at the comments from you guys, the amateur versus pro graphic design series has been super, super helpful. And so today I've decided to gather some of the best moments from that series and compile it into a single video. Each section is a little reminder of your design workflow and how you can elevate it from amateurish to being more professional in quality. And if you are struggling with your design concepts or your kind of skill level, just realize everybody starts at the beginning. You know, we just need to perform and progress as we move through our journey of our graphic design career. But first, let's look at what I did correctly. For the logo type, I used an uppercase sans serif font, which I do think works well. However, this specific sans serif font, I don't think is adequate enough. And also I think the negative space on the symbol of the M using the screw is a pretty good concept, it's pretty neat, and it could go places if it was developed more. One of the biggest drawbacks on this design was the layout. Now this is something that many people really don't think about too much when considering logo design flaws, and that is the technical aspects of the logo. We can see that things aren't aligned, there's different thicknesses of the square around the M, and it just looks very unneat, unprofessional, and untidy. And so again, using my original concept and just building on that using the same elements provided, here are two different versions of that logo that I think do look a lot better and they're a lot more neat. You can see everything is aligned properly and I've changed up that logo type so there's some contrast going on and it does come across as more professional. And so we've arrived at a kind of somewhat recent logo that I've worked on. And as you can tell, this is already a lot different from the previous logos we've looked at. But why do you think this logo works? Why is it an efficient logo design? Firstly, technicals. It's aligned properly and everything is flush and spaced out equally. This in of itself does allude to a professional design and it will help the viewer have more peace of mind, so to speak, subconsciously when looking at your design. And I'm actually going to talk about a few things now that once I started to implement my logo design projects, things began to excel in progression and professionalism. One of those is shape psychology. This is something I've spoken about before in this channel, and it's hugely important. Utilizing shape psychology can tap into people's emotions and their triggers, and then thus you can market the logo and the brand to specific people efficiently. And if you use the correct shape psychology relating to the brief, then things just kind of gel together a lot easier. Kind of like a starting point to build up the logo from the foundations upwards. One of the other really important things is to remove excess junk. You know, just refine things down to the simplest form while still having an effective design. An example would be that really silly motif I showed you throughout the entire video that I used on several designs in my past. It doesn't need to be there, it's just a random thing I slapped on there because it looked good, or I thought it looked good, but it didn't. And finally, you need to remember what you're doing. You are adding value to someone's business. You're not there to make something that looks good or something that's just, you know, a pretty, or oh, look at my skills in Illustrator. No, you're adding value to a business. Someone's come to you because they want to improve their business or they need to market themselves in a more efficient manner. So your job is to solve that problem, visually speaking. That's all it is. Now, I don't like how the text layout down here is pretty unlegible. And also the third line has very few words in comparison to the two lines above. I also think the main text needs some attention. And finally, I'm going to basically change the entire layout of this design. And that's because I don't like this huge orange dividing space. I came up with two slightly different revisions and I can't seem to decide which one I prefer. So here's the first one. And as you can see, I've dropped that dividing graphic and I've opened up the entire design in orange tones. Orange is great to suggest action and movement, so it does fit this design. I've added some contrasting color for the main typography and then arranged the text below in a neater, more visually appealing manner. The second version is where I flipped the layouts and I have a subtle, simpler black text below for the subheading. But which of these designs do you prefer? I myself really can't decide. So context is really crucial when designing something for a client. Context helps you deliver the message more efficiently and adds an extra depth to the design. So for example, let's take a look at this landing page design I've made here. If the landing page is talking about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, 
having a relevant image or an icon that links back to that textual content is highly efficient and it's going to elevate your designs to that next level. So you can see the before image where I don't have the icon, things don't look nearly as professional as when I add it in. You do want to try and add some context that the viewer can instantly understand and relate back to the message of the design. And one quick way to do that is with an icon or an image. So here is a Nike poster, and it is a pretty simple poster, and I personally would prefer some typography on it, but it is a very awesome demonstration of contrast. And for this first exercise, I would like you to look at this poster, look at this design. Can you see the three different uses of contrast in this poster? Yeah, that's right. There are three different ways contrast is being used here. So let's go over the easiest one first and foremost. We have the contrast of color. As you can see here, the white against the black, or maybe the white against the orangey pinky color here, peachy color. And that is obvious. It is the first and most obvious one you would probably realize. But what is the second form of contrast on this poster? It is actually shape, the contrast of shape. As you can see here, we have very straight angled pointy lines running along the entire poster. They are contrasted with the smooth curvature of the actual shoe and the logo itself. Now this is somewhat subtle to some people or even unrecognizable, but this allows the shoes, the product in this sense, and also their logo to stand out. Everything else is angled straight line. So that's the second form of contrast here. But can you see the third? So yeah, the third form of contrast is texture. If you look closely here, there's a kind of sandy color blur texture going on on the background. That is in complete contrast to the shoe itself, which looks very smooth and realistic. It's a contrasting texture. And again, it just alludes the viewer to looking at the shoe itself. I find it interesting how the designer has put black shoes on a black part of the design. And again, I would personally prefer some typography going on here too. But that's an example of having three different forms of contrast on one simple design. Design number four has a pretty major typography offense, but can you see what it is? Now this one probably jumps out to most people immediately and it is there glaring you right in the face right now when you're looking at it. So here's the change, and the issue in the first design was the line length. The length of a body text line needs to be well thought out, and it shouldn't be too short or too long in comparison to the design. This will change on different designs and it is relative. But also on the first design, the text was almost touching the design elements on the right, which just doesn't look good. Now let's take a look at this Nike advert campaign. What kind of principles do you see at work right here? Now right off the bat, we have contrast being used in the Nike logo itself, because it's the only part of the design that is not black, white or gray. This creates a focal point for the viewer and it also draws them into the design. It also gives some brand recognition to Nike itself. The typography also utilizes contrast with the first two words being white and then the final word being black. This again creates some interest for the design. We also have some asymmetrical balance because to the right of the design, you have everything filled up in a large space in terms of the imagery. And then to the left, we have some negative space with a smallish kind of group of typography. And this could actually also fall into the principle of proximity. Now there's also a nice degree of movement being used as you can see that her leg is guiding the viewer's eye towards the Nike logo and also the text. And then you have her arm along with the tennis racket moving across down to the bottom right of the design. Movement just leads the viewer's eye around the design. There is a whole lot more going on in this design by Nike, but I would like you just to understand how skillful and professional designers do not fluke their way into a successful career they do consider every single element and relate things back to these very fundamental design principles. If you're not thinking about the design principles every time you actually work on something, then you are selling yourself short. So it's competition time, and I asked you to redesign this 90s music poster. Now I swear the quality from the work you guys send me each competition just gets better and better. 
I could have chosen multiple designs as the winners, so don't be too peeved if you don't see yours today. So the first redesign is by Mamun Mia, and I chose this design because it is so fresh and so clean and impacting compared to the original one. I love the tape cassettes concept, which does relate back to the 90s, and I did see quite a few people doing this, so congrats to those designers as well. I also would say that with this design, the body text below the heading is quite difficult to read, so it would need increasing in size, or maybe just place a darker colour behind it or something like that. So the second design was by Onashan, and again, this was a really fresh and a really unique take on the original. I like the colours that do represent the 90s, and also the clean layouts. But once again here, I can see issues with the body text below the main heading, because the line lengths are too staggered and too irregular. But yet all in all, it was a very interesting take on the original design. The third design was by Pixel Creations, and this design is good because it has taken the original concept and style, and used that same style to make their own layouts and version. But again, for the third time, the body text below the main heading has some issues. It is too close to the main heading, but also there is an orphan on the last line, or in other terms, there is just a single word on that last line. That's a pretty big no-no in terms of typography layouts. But yeah, well done to everyone who won today's competition, and of course to everyone who entered, because there were a lot of great designs out there I could have chosen. I have more new content coming on this channel, I have more competitions, and I'm going to keep making videos that resonate with you and do help your graphic design career. If you want to see something specific on this channel, just let me know in the comment section below. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.